When I came back, I felt like I was gone for... I don't even know. All I remember is um, when, when this happens, I'm going through like a tunnel and like a, like a tube really, really fast and it's dark. It looks like outer space. But I see all these lights and I feel happy. I feel, it's weird, it's like this, this sensation throughout my whole body where I just feel pure bliss. And I remember reading a book about this in, um, in middle school, it was called, um, what was it called? It was about a boy with seizures. seizures. <sighs> it's just one thing after another with me. I'm sorry, the last time I made a video on this channel in real time, I told you I'm done. And um, at this point in time, I don't, I don't even know. I do know when I go back to the States, I'm enrolling in counseling, or at least I'm looking into it. I don't have insurance, I know a lot of you guys brought it up on Twitter, but um, I need to find a better way to get my emotions out, right? So anyways, I'm here at my mukbang table, and I just want to share with you guys something that I don't want to say unique because it's not a positive thing. It's scary, but almost fascinating. And I just, I, 90% I, of you watching this have never experienced this. And I want to tell you what I saw and what I felt, and I've been going through this my whole life, okay? What makes this scarier than all the other times is, well, I was hooked up to a pulse, a pulse reader on my finger, and the monitor was over here, and you know, doot, doot, doot. My mom is a registered nurse. She's been helping me figure out what's wrong my whole life. I remember so many times her taking me to not only therapists and counselors for, you know, behavioral issues, but also, I remember when I was a kid, I was hooked up to this machine. It was like glue stuck in my hair and all these wires, and, I remember being in a dark room and the window was over there and I remember I had pretended to sleep because they told me to sleep. They were going to monitor my brain waves or something like that. And I remember pretending because I couldn't actually fall asleep. So many doc- my mom's a registered nurse and um, you know, she was determined to figure out like what this is. Seizures, epilepsy, neurological disorder. She got an alarming phone call when I was in preschool. Now I don't remember this. This is what she tells me that the preschool teachers told her. And when I was a little kid, I, I was apparently, you know, at the table doing arts and crafts or something like that. And I, I told the teacher, I smell chocolate. I smell chocolate. And the next thing you know, I'm on the floor and I'm convulsing. <laughs> and my mom, it's not funny, but I'm, my mom told me she's never sped so fast down the highway. She just dropped everything she was doing. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's funny because my mom has terrible road rage and I'm just imagining. She's kind of like Corilla Deville from the 101 Dalmatians, you know, that scene when she's driving like a crazy woman, that's my mom, on a regular day. So I just imagine her driving down to get me, but I go and I come back, I go and I come back, and I don't know what it is, the doctors, there's no, it, you know, going unconscious, you know, fainting spells, I think that's what inspired Sleeping Beauty, I think you go out and you come back and there's really no, there's really no science to really say what happens. All they know is that the back part of your brain is the only thing that's working and everything else shuts off. It's the same thing that happens when you die. Um, so the other day I experienced something that still shake, I'm shaken from it. I'm shooken up from it. I have to get a physical for my marriage visa. It's now 2000, 2018, I can reapply. If you guys don't know my story, I have lots of videos on it, feel free to check them out. They're on this channel, but basically I'm reapplying. Once I get deported, I have to be in the United States for 60 days, then I can return. Everything's already been organized, but when I return, I have a, a lawyer that's gonna put through the marriage visa. And one of the requirements in Colombia is they need a physical. They need a doctor's check to see, you know, test you for stuff and just make sure whatever, you're not bringing disease into the country. And um, I have no insurance. The only thing I do is YouTube. I also do you now, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, it's cheaper for me to do that here in Colombia. I've, it will cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars, maybe even a thousand dollars to get a checkup in the United States uninsured. Whereas here, you know, it's only a couple hundred dollars. So it's way cheaper. 
So anyways, the other day I went with Orlin, we took the bus, we're walking up the building. I remember talking about the mural because it's a brick wall and then we walk into the, the waiting room and we're sitting there and they, they call my name. I walk in, I go straight, basically straight towards the, uh, the table it has like a, not cookie sheet, wrapper, uh, wax paper, you know, has that thing. You sit down on the table. So I'm sitting here. There's two doctors. There's a woman doctor and a man doctor. They both come in and it's just regular procedures. They want to do my blood pressure. They want to check my pulse. They check my eyes, ears, reflexes, my weight, all that kind of stuff. And the first thing they wanted to do was the blood pressure. And I told Orlin right away, I'm like, I might, I might go unconscious. This happens every time. Um, I don't know why, but when I get my blood pressure taken, I pass out and I come back. It's, it comes with needles, IVs. I, I see the veins in my feet. I see my veins popping out of my foot. I'm clipping my toenails. And the next thing I know, I'm on the floor and I fell off my bed because I saw the veins. Um, I hear an announcement at church about the blood drive. I remember passing out. My mom was freaked out. Of it all. Um, I remember going apartment shopping with my aunt and my cousin in Pennsylvania. She was considering to move there and I hit my knee on the door, the next thing I know, I'm this close to the curb. I just fell over. And like the story with the, the chocolate thing from preschool, I convulse, I shake. So uh, I know this might happen. It's like, it's like anxiety. Like I, I feel it in my whole body. It's, I know it's stemming from my brain, but I just, I feel a rush. And they had, they first put a thing on my finger. It was like a, for the pulse and it was hooked up to a monitor they put the blood pressure on and i i told orlin i'm like i'm gonna pass out i'm gonna pass out and the next thing i know i don't even know where i am and there's a doctor standing over me with like a thing on my nose and i later found out it was alcohol but since i was hooked up to a monitor do you do, 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 and then just flatlined for a couple seconds. It was like three seconds, four seconds. My heart skipped beats for four seconds. That's crazy. Um, when I came back, I felt like I was gone for I don't even know. All I remember is um, when when this happens, I'm going through like a tunnel and like a like a tube really really fast and it's dark it looks like outer space but I see all these lights and I feel happy I feel it's weird it's like this this sensation throughout my whole body where I just feel pure bliss and I remember reading a book about this in um in middle school, it was called, um, what was it called? It was about a boy with seizures, seizures by Terry Truman, I think. And it was fascinating to me because I was trying to figure out why this happens to me. And I read that book and it was through the perspective of the boy who has the seizures or epilepsy. And I remember at the end, he thought his father was going to kill him. Oh no, spoiler alert. But he thought he was going to die and he says... The next thing he knows, he feels like he's flying and he feels this sense of happiness. But on the other side, everyone sees him shaking and they feel like he's in so much pain. And when I come back, it takes like two hours for me to feel stable. The first thing that came to my mind was like, I need a steak. I need iron. I need, I was, I had like steak floating in my head. And to be completely honest, these past three or four days, I've, I had been vegan. Um, not because I want to go vegan or anything, but I just had been eating a lot of junk. I think that's what made me go so crazy. You know, when you're eating fried food and mukbangs, you know, you need to balance out your body. And I thought maybe just, you know, some plant food. And it just made me feel so weak. So, 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 so weak. Um, and my immune system went down too because I have, I know it's embarrassing, but I have herpes and I had all these outbreaks all of a sudden. The moment I changed my diet to vegan for like three days, I had all these outbreaks and that's that's a drop in immune system. When you change your diet or any kind, any kind there's a change in environment for your body that happens, right? I don't know. I just wanted to share this with you guys. It's the, 
it makes me believe that dying, there's no pain. And I, you know, for, through all my research over the years, when people do go unconscious, they've done tests, they don't really understand what happens. Everything turns off the brain except the back, the, the top of the spine. And it's so that your body doesn't feel pain. The same thing happens when, you're, when you die, the same thing happens when you go unconscious. And some people don't wake up from it. That's the scary part. Um, I haven't passed out for a while. The last time I passed out was, I guess when Kiwi bit me, I don't know what came first, Kiwi or my eye getting swollen. The last time I went to the doctors, basically. That was the last time, I'm pretty sure. I can't remember. Um, I, it's been a lot less. I, it happened way more as a child. When I, broke my, when I broke my bone from falling off the monkey bars at the playground, my mom said, oh, and the swing, I broke, Bo I broke all the bones I've ever broken in my body have been at the playground. My arm or my wrist and my ankle, one of the two. And uh, my mom was there for both of them and I'm just like, you know, going like this and it's very scary. So I just, I guess I'm, excuse me, making this video to say, you know, we're all afraid of dying. We're all afraid of feeling pain, you know, a, sh a bullet going through me or dying in a plane crash, which is one of my worst fears ever or falling off a building or having a heart attack you you just it's all this fear it's all this fear that you don't want to be in pain excruciating pain but through every time i go unconscious i feel like in that book i read i feel like i'm flying i feel like i'm soaring there's just happiness running throughout my whole body and i see colors and lights and that's what happens to me. That's what happens to me. So I wanted to share that with you guys. It's not like my, my life isn't dramatic enough through everything I'm going through. I have about three weeks until I'm deported. Like I said, the last time I made a video right here, I was going a little crazy and I'm gonna take down that video. Orland has a pet snake and the other day he fed a mouse to it, a, a live mouse. Peep, 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 peep. It was in this, bo this uh, cardboard box and I remember him opening the lid, the snake was there, of the container where the snake's kept. He shakes the cardboard box, the mouse falls out, and the snake looks at it, and then whew, really, really fast, like lightning. Whew. And as soon as it bit the mouse, the mouse went beep, like a, a really high-pitched squeal. And then the snake just holds on. You guys, you know, Google this, watch on YouTube, BBC, like it's a circle of life, right? But the leg keeps twitching. And Orland's like, wow, it's so cool. Like, you know, he's very fascinated by plants and animals and herbivorous animals and carnivorous animals. Like he is all into the whole, he's very knowledgeable. He just gets excitement, you know? It's like watching David Attenberg. I saw the mouse and I saw its foot just going like this. And I said, oh my gosh, it must be in so much pain. And then a few days after that, this happened to me. And right before I made this video, I told Orland, I said, it was like that mouse. Uh, I wonder if it was in pain the whole time. He said, no. He said, it was like, maybe like a millisecond of pain. The brain turns off and it's just reflux. It's just reflux of the leg. It's not actually an excruciating pain. Maybe that's one thing I can bring you guys from this video. You're probably like, why am I even making this video? Maybe to bring a little comfort if you're afraid of dying or you're afraid of being in pain when you die, going unconscious and coming back, passing out and um, from what science does tell us, it's just like this release and just so, I just, so happy. It's very strange. Very, very strange. Very strange. I also would like to apologize for the crazy video I made the other day of me screaming and cursing and I was going through a lot. I need to work in a better way of dealing with this. That's why I'm looking into counseling when I go home. If I can do that temporarily, I only, I'm only there for 60 days. I'm looking into it because that, that's just not okay. And I don't want to scare you guys. At the same time, I don't want to feel, I don't want to keep it bottled in because one day it'll explode. That was me exploding, basically. That was, that's like months and months of just all this inside me of all this stuff I've been going through. It's just, boom, the bottle exploded and I just went everywhere. I'm sorry to, if you made it this long in the video, you're probably a true supporter, you know, like, you're, 
you want to know what I have to say and you care about me and the, you're the one I really want to apologize to because you're the one rooting for me and you're the one watching all of my videos. Uh, the haters click on, they click out after two seconds. So uh, if you made it this far, I want to do a special thank you and also a special apology to you. It was not just the hate, it was also the pressure of everything going on off camera. Well, on camera too, I've shared basically everything with you guys. I'm gonna be filming some more really cool stuff. Um, there's some noodle mukbangs. I have a whole case of noodles down here. Uh, noodle mukbangs I wanna do. I wanna do black bean noodle. I wanna do spicy stew noodle. Lots of stuff I wanna do. So stay tuned for that. And I appreciate your time. And I will see you very soon for another a regular, happy, whew, clean slate mukbang, you know? So, thanks.